How can you improve the performance of GPT-like models for your specific use case? One approach is to fine-tune the large language model such as Llama 2.0 using your own dataset. So when should you fine-tune a large language model such as Llama 2.0? Well, the answer for that is that when you have to do it, so when prompting doesn't work for your use case, and when you know how to do and what to do. When you're using large language models with your own data, you basically have two approaches that you can integrate the large language model with your own data sets. On the left, we have the fine tuning approach and on the right, we have the retrieval augmented generation, which is probably the more popular approach since it requires just a prompt and then you have to basically input some parts of your text right within the prompt. So why you may use a rack or a retrieval augmented generation? The simple way to answer this is that you have an easier way to use multiple knowledge bases or just single one. So for example, if you have some financial data or let's say lawyer documents, etc., multiple PDFs, you can use those to integrate some parts of the text right within the prompt and analyze that using the large language model. We have a single model that you can essentially ask it uh, multiple tasks, and this will work with just this one model. And then some of the drawbacks of this approach is that it really doesn't have much more knowledge or any other knowledge on your data outside of what you're putting into the prompt. And then you are pretty much have to experiment with multiple prompts and evaluate their performance based on how good your prompts can be or how good your prompt engineering techniques can be. And getting a consistent type of output, for example, Markdown or JSON or some different approach to the formatting output can be a bit of a hard task to do as well. So fine tuning is actually solving those two problems uh, pretty much uh, in the general case. And but it is, of course, adding some more complexities to the overall performance of the model. So benefits of the fine tuning of large language model is that probably the model, if fine tuned correctly, is going to have much better performance on your own tasks or use cases compared to the general or the base large language model. Then you have to do a, a lot more or a lot less prompt engineering. So you basically have to put in some prompts that are that can be much shorter compared to what you have to do within the general large language model. And then the result of that is that you will probably have much more tokens that are available based on the limits of the model. And those tokens you can use in order to provide even more data, of course. But the drawbacks, uh, drawbacks of the fine tuning a large language model is that it can be hard to do. Uh, this requires a lot of resources, a lot of time to experiment. And then you, of course, have to have a lot of high quality data in order to get some good results on the fine tuning. And if you have or if you plan to use this with external knowledges, such as when you're doing retrieval augmented generation, this might not work as well as the general large language model since it is fine tuned on your specific cases. In this video, I'm going to show you an example on how to fine tune a large language model, Llama 2.0 in our case, in order to summarize conversations on Twitter between customer support agents and users. And the task will be to summarize conversations into something that is easier to read and short, of course. So we're going to use a custom data set in order to do that. If you want to follow along, there is a complete text tutorial called Fine Tuning Llama 2.0 on a custom data set that is available on mlexpert.io. And this one is available for ML Expert Pro subscribers only. So here you can also find a link to the Jupyter Notebook or the Google Co-op Notebook along with a complete tutorial, along with the code and examples and you can pretty much follow along everything that we're doing here. So if you want to support my work, please consider subscribing to ML Expert Pro. Thanks. Of course, the dataset that you're going to use is going to be specific to your own use case. And in our example, I'm taking this dataset from Salesforce Dialog Studio. 
So this is pretty much a collection of unified dialogues dataset and instruction aware models for conversation AI provided again by Salesforce. And from here, I'm using this Twitter sum dataset, which contains uh, these splits. So those are ready for us to use. And you can see that we have some summaries right here and we have the conversations themselves. So I'm going to continue with using, or I'm going to show you how you can pre process this data in order to provide it into a format that is available for training a one two point model. The next logical step is to choose a large language model that you can fine tune on your own data. And for that, you probably need something that is open and you can use it in a commercial setting. So here we're going to use pretty much the state of the art open model provided by Meta AI called WAMA 2.0. And this model has a lot of advantages. It has different model sizes and it is having a context length of over 4,000 uh, context uh, tokens. So yeah, this is pretty much state of the art model right now. And this is visible on the open LLM leaderboard where pretty much every top spot right here is the fine-tuned version of this Llama 2.0 model. I have a Google Club notebook that is already running. And here you can see that we are using a Tesla T4 GPU with about uh, 16 gigabytes of VRAM. I'm not using a high RAM option, so this should be available for Google Club free users as well. And I'm installing pretty much the standard libraries, Torch, Transformers, datasets, but then we're going to use Aura technique and or QR, then bits and bytes, and then the TRL or Transformers uh, reinforcement learning library for the trainer. I'm going to show you that in a bit. Uh, we have the imports, and most of this is again pretty standard for loading the model. And then we're going to use a bits and bytes config for the quantization that we're going to do with the QR technique, training arguments, and then the trainer itself by the TRL library. I'm going to use the Llama 2.0 7 billion base model, so not the instruction or chat tuned model. So this is going to do just the summarizations without the instruction training. And here we are loading the data set that I've shown you in a bit, uh, a while back. So I'm going to do some pre-processing in order to extract conversations from this. And I'm going to show you the resulting conversation that I'm going to output for an a single example, uh, you can see that the conversation is formatted into a user agent, user agent conversation. We have also the summary and then we have the instruction that we are going to pass in as a prompt to our model. Note that we are using an alpaca style formatting of the template or the prompt. We have the instruction below is a conversation between a human and an AI agent, write the summary of the conversation. Then we have the input with the conversation itself. And then this is the response or the summary. So if you want to use your own personal data set, you might have to format it into a similar format. Of course, the Alpaca style is not required, but I find it pretty easy to use and read. So I prefer to format my fine tuning examples in similar format. But note that the base model doesn't actually use any uh, prompt formatting, so you might use whatever you like. So in order to find or to transform this data set into that, I'm creating this function called generate text. And the most important part here is that I'm getting the summaries. I'm getting the first summary of the all of the summaries, and then I'm creating the conversation text with just which just iterates over the output of the conversation. And I'm using this clean text function in order to remove URL mentions in Twitter, multiple spaces, and then some strange characters that I found. And I'm pretty much using the user and the agent in order to provide the conversation text itself. And finally, I'm using this generate training prompt, which is using the default system prompt that I've shown you. Uh, it is below as a conversation between a human and an AI agent, write the summary of the conversation. Of course, you can try something different as well. And I'm just formatting the system prompt, the conversation and the summary into the Alpaca format that we are using. And this is the result that we are getting. So I'm pretty much going over the whole data set, shuffling it, then calling this function and removing all of the original 
uh, columns since we don't actually need those. And this is the data set for the training and validation and test split. Thus far, we have just the conversation, the summary and the text for each point. Then I'm logging in into the notebook on the hugging face and I'm then downloading the model, which again is a WAMA 2.0 with the 7 billion parameters. And I'm loading this into a normalized float 4. So this is the quantization that we're going to use. And then I'm getting the tokenizer for the WAMA. This should take some time. And then uh, what is pretty nice about the recent versions of the Transformers library is that you have this quantization config right within the models. So this is now supported and it works with bits and bytes. Uh, also, it works with auto GPTQ. If you're uh, going to use that, you might give it a try. This should support it as well. And then I'm using a war config which is very similar to what I did previously. Uh, we have the ranking of the matrix equal to 16, and I have a scaling factor of 32 and some dropout. You can play around with these settings and those might work better on your own data sets if you change those. But I'm using this causal large uh, language modeling for the task that we're going to do. So this is going to just predict the next token. And I did run this for about, let me see, yeah, did. Uh, this all run for about 12 minutes on a V100 V GPU, actually. Oh, the T4 is going to probably take two or three times more, but still very feasible. And this is uh, the response or the, yeah, the evaluation was that I got. Let me just have a look at the scalers right here. Yeah. So you can see that the evaluation was was running very nicely. And probably if you are running this for more than two epochs, this is what I did, uh, you might get even better uh, validation loss. Uh, the training was, was also trending downwards. So I would say that uh, this training was pretty okay. Uh, for just the two epochs, we were able to converge to some nice validation loss. So this was good. And in order to train this, I've been using these training arguments. Uh, you can note those parameters right within the tutorial or the full text tutorial that is available for on ML Expert. One of the more important things here is that I'm using a cosine warning scheduler. So you can see that actually the, yeah, actually the warning rate uh, during the training yeah, and you can see that we were using this specific warning rate scheduler. And this seems to be working quite well, at least for this example. So I would uh, suggest that you use a similar warning, uh, warning rate scheduler as well. And the other important thing is here that we are using the bits and bytes compatible Adam optimizer with the weight decay fix. So this is uh, pretty nice and it appears to be working quite well, at least for this training. So another thing is that I'm passing in the PEFT config or the config for the WARA or QWARA right within the SS, SFT trainer. So this is the trainer that accepts the training arguments. Uh, we are giving it a maximum sequence length of the that is equal to the WAMA 2.0. And then the field that we are going to use for the training, in our case, this is the text field. So this contains the prompt in the correct format, of course. And then this is a very nice uh, table that we got during the training. And you can see that the validation was, was converging uh, nicely. Of course, the training was, was uh, getting down a, a lot faster. Yeah, but either the validation or the test set are pretty uh, small. So it's hard to tell whether or not the results are quite good at least looking at those, but at least we're looking at some type of convergence and minimization. So after the training is complete, I'm just saving the model and this will just save the QORA adapter. So if you want to merge this, you might use this code in order to find the water or the adapter and apply it to the uh, whole model itself. So you can have a single model without the need to apply, apply the QR adapter to it. Either way, for the inference and the 
comparison between the fine tune and the base model i'm just generating this prompt with the instruction the conversation and then asking for the summary with the correct alpaca format and i took a lot of examples or uh, just five of the examples within the test data set so those are examples that the model haven't seen uh, and i just formatted them into the way that we've formatted the training set so i've created the model and then wrote this small function that pretty much summarizes some text by passing in the tokenizer and then tokenizing the text and then i am uh, pretty much cutting out the generated outputs after the input length uh, on, on the tokenizer using a very small temperature size and maximum new tokens equal to 256. So in order to have a look at a single example of this base model, I took this conversation and this summary and uh, we took about 24 seconds in order to summarize this conversation. Uh, and the response of the base model is pretty much uh, junk. Yeah, so you can see that we are getting pretty much the same input that we, uh, the same output as the input of the conversation. So not very good. Uh, the second example is pretty much the same thing. Uh, the conversation between change the phone number of an account. Yeah, I think that this is actually within, with the fine tuned version of the model. Not sure about that. And here uh, we have another response that is uh, pretty much the input itself, so not very good. Let's have a look at the fine-tuned version of the outputs. So, for example, with this conversation, uh, we got this response. And if you just take this part, we have a very long summary, but still a summary that contains all of the information of the conversation. So I would say that the, here the fine-tuned model performed much better compared to the base model, but not great since the, this summary is very long. Uh, but on the second example, I just took uh, all of the output up to the first new line text. And uh, here the summary is much better. Customer is complaining that his account is linked to an old number and now he is asked to verify his account. So yeah, the summary of this conversation is very good. Uh, at least this is with the fine-tuned version. And then for the third example, customer is complaining about the new updates on iOS 11. And we have the conversation right here. You can read this for yourself. So the predicted summary is customer is complaining that the new update iOS 11 sucks. Agent asked to DM and they will work from there. So again, pretty nice summary. So the fine-tuned version of this model is performing very well. If you found this tutorial helpful, please let me down in the comments below. Also, if you have any further questions, use the comments and please like, share and subscribe to this video. Also, please join the ML Expert Pro subscribers to get a full text tutorial on the Google Co-op Notebook. Thanks.